Funeral services were held Saturday for victims of one of the deadliest Russian airstrikes since the war in Ukraine began, as Ukraine's president vowed to increase domestic military production by creating underground weapons factories. The funerals took place in the eastern Ukrainian city of Poltava for the victims of a Russian missile attack on a military training facility that left over 50 dead and more than 300 injured. Hundreds of mourners, including grieving families, local residents and officials, gathered at the Cathedral of the Assumption in the city, some 350 kilometers, 200 miles southeast of Kiev, for the solemn ceremony. Sobbing relatives, many holding red carnations, stood over caskets placed outside the church, draped in yellow and blue Ukrainian flags. An air raid siren sounded during the service. Local residents knelt in a silent tribute as hearses carrying the victims passed by on their way to a military cemetery outside the city for burial. Russia has intensified missile and drone attacks on Ukrainian cities in recent weeks, targeting energy infrastructure across the country and causing deadly strikes in residential areas. The attacks have underscored Moscow's long-range capabilities as Ukraine braces for what will likely be another difficult winter as Russia continues to smash Ukraine's power grid, knocking out some 70% of generation capacity and rupturing heat and water supplies. The sound of explosions thundered over the Ukrainian capital overnight as multiple Russian attack drones were intercepted by the city's air defenses. No injuries or serious damage were reported. The Ukrainian Air Force said that 67 drones were launched over the country overnight, with air defenses active in 11 regions. 58 drones were shot down, with three more destroyed by electronic weapons systems, it said. Debris from one drone was photographed on the street outside Ukraine's parliament, the Vakovna Rada. Ukraine's parliament press service confirmed that drone fragments had been found but said there were no casualties and no damage to the parliament building. Elsewhere, a Russian artillery attack Saturday on the eastern Ukrainian city of Kostyantinivka killed three men and injured three people, said Donetsk region governor Vadim Filashkin. He said the attack damaged a high-rise building and local power lines. Later, Friday, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said the death toll from the September the 3rd strike at the Military Institute of Communications in Poltava has risen to 55, with 328 people injured. That includes people with severe injuries, such as amputations and internal organ damage, Zelensky said, speaking at a conference outside the Italian city of Milan. Our people are under constant threat of Russian missile and drone strikes every night and every day. Zelensky renewed his call for the removal of restrictions on using Western supplied weapons to strike Russian territory, adding that Ukraine was ramping up its own weapons production. We are setting up underground weapons production facilities so Ukrainian soldiers can defend themselves even if supplies from our partners are delayed, he said. We have developed new drones and missiles, and we are gradually bringing this war back to Russia. Eventually, Russian President Vladimir Putin will feel the pressure to seek only one thing, peace. Kyiv has continued to launch its own strikes against Russia. In the Russian border region of Voronezh, on Saturday, Governor Alexander Gusev said that a drone strike had sparked a fire and the detonation of explosive objects. Writing on social media, he said that a state of emergency had been declared for the region's Ostrogozhsky district and that several villages had been evacuated. He did not provide the names of the villages affected and urged followers not to share photos or videos of the fire that could be geolocated. Davis reported from Manchester, England. Evgeny Maloletka and Alex Babenko in Poltava, Ukraine, and Derek Gatopoulos in Kyiv, Ukraine, contributed.